Heavenly Father in heaven, thank you for this privilege of pouring our hearts out to God. We are in awe of your power and that, Lord, we're unworthy and desperately needy that you would invite us to the blessing each of us here tonight need most. And so as we open up your word, please be our teacher, please be our guide, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, help us understand and obey your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. What book have we been studying? Hosea. And what chapter are we now headed over to? 13. Okay. I am relieved to hear that because it's always scary to study one thing and hear everyone else say, oh, no, we're somewhere else. <laughs> so it's great that we're all together for 16 powerful verses. Who has the microphone? Miss Jean, do you want to start us off? Three, six, nine, twelve. Uh, some of you uh, may want to do just one verse. Some of you may want to do two verses. If everybody starts out with two verses, somebody's going to get left out. So use your uh, unselfish <laughs> wisdom. And uh, something tells me if we run out of verses, there'll be more to read, so it's not a problem. But how about one verse, maybe two, depending on what you want. Hosea chapter 13, verse 1. Yes. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. Ooh. And now they sin more and more and have made them molten images of their sin. And I will perform to you on with you all every the work of your face. The same will their sin that trespass against the Lord. Therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud and as the early dew that passeth away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor and as the smoke out of the chimney. Mm. For yet yeah. I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior besides me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of the great drought. 13.6, according to thy pasture, their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Therefore will I be unto them as a lion, as a leopard by the way, will I observe them. Verse 8, I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps and will rend the call of their heart, and there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. Uh, are we on 10? Yeah, verse 9. Eight. Oh, Israel, you are destroyed, but your help is from me. I will be your king, where is any other, that he may save you and all your cities and your judges to whom you said, give me a king and princes. I give thee a king in mine anger and tuck him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up in his sin is hid. 
14.13. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of breaking forth of children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Fifteen. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come. The wind of the Lord shall come upon come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, and his fountains shall be dried up. He, sh he shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with child shall be ripped up. Hmm. This is not necessarily an easy chapter to listen to, but I hope that in the shock of hearing it, we also grasp the enormity of what God is saying. And I'm interested, what do, A, what do you hear God saying to his people back then? B, what is he trying to say to us here today? And so we kick that off by asking if you had to just pick one verse, which one impacted you the most and why? Jeremiah 23, 1 kind of covers the whole thing. Okay. Okay, it says, Woe be unto the pastures that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Again, these folks, they chose this. Mm. They brought it on themselves because mm. they wanted to be in charge of themselves instead of allowing God to be. Mm. As far as verse 1 and 2, there's a contrast between what God wants and what they are. When they were trembling, like the way June read it, it sounded very humble. We come before God with trembling and, mm. and meekness. Then we're exalted. That's what the Bible says in James 4, 6, and 7. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. He'll lift you up. But when they offended, then they died and they get to the point in verse 2 where they're saying, let the man that sacrificed kiss the calves. But in Psalms 2, that's a reference. You, you should be kissing the Lord. You should mm. be. You know, so they've just got everything flipped. Mm. I guess I like that summary starting out the chapter. Mm. Mm. Wow. I just read today that uh, it was the custom if they made their idols all the idols they worshipped it was the custom to kiss them mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> still is yeah, I have se wow. I've seen people on idols kiss toes of the idol mm. and, and stuff like that but it, it's mm. beyond me but the judgment sounds hard on Israel but the Lord is so merciful. I think it was verse 13 that they had a chance to steal. Uh, God had mercy on them. They had a chance to be spiritually reborn. And um, I'm just so thankful that God in his mercy, uh, I'm not perfect mm. <laughs> by a long shot, but I just thank them for his mercy, mm -hmm. and he, we can, he'll forgive us 
if we're honest and truly really mean it he'll forget us gives us many times mm. you know as many as it takes and uh, so uh, that's the one verse i liked mm -hmm. uh, it's you talked about the pains of childbirth mm. uh, i guess it's being spiritually reborn is what it what it means mm. but um, anyway i like that was my favorite Amen. My favorite, I think, is verse 9. Mm -hmm. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. And Israel did destroy themselves by not following God. Mm. And we're doing that today. If you look out there at the world and hear and listen to what's going on out there, they're destroying themselves and only God's help will bring them back. Mm. And so I just keep thinking, hang on to Jesus, Mary. Hang on to <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that would be good advice for all of us, wouldn't it? Mm. Here comes the microphone. Who else? Thank you for these insights. I appreciate coming back to Miss Tammy and then bouncing back to Brother Kenny. Verse 14. Um, talks about the grave and it leads us to 1 Corinthians 15 55 mm. in which tells us O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory we serve a compassionate God amen amen coming back to brother Kenny uh, I'm not saying this is a favorite I just have these things that flash through my mind when I read certain certain uh -huh. things and uh 16 where it talks about the damage that's going to be done um that there there are actually people on this planet then and now that believe they're working for god and doing these things mm. the, the, the the extreme jesuit oath that's this mm. verbiage looks like they took it right out of this mm. Mm. um so it's and, and there are other groups out there too that believe that they're going to kill other christians who are apostate um, like uh, what shepherd? Have you heard of Shepherd's Rod? Mm. Um, and it's just—I don't know—it's disturbing to me that <laughs> that people think that by killing another human being that they could possibly be doing God any service. Yes, I mean he can easily—he can easily open a crack in the ground and let him fall into it. You know what I mean? Mm. So mm. it's—I uh, yeah. don't know—it it, it's always something that I've had a hard time sure. grasping, and then also having a conversation with people that think that taking up arms is the proper way to mm. to bring glory to God's kingdom. Mm. Sure. Yeah. And how ironic with that description, they were doing that even in Jesus' day, rebuking our Savior for violating the Sabbath while planning to murder him. Something about it is expedient for one man to die that the whole nation not perish. How misguided. Brother Jimmy. I was also looking at 16 where it says, she hath rebelled. I think rebellion is even back in times of Israel, but also personally. For I know I, I've rebelled in my past, mm. and God was merciful to let me come back and kept drawing me back when I thought he wouldn't. Amen. And I think he's what he's pleading here with Israel, and yeah. he's trying to plead with them. Giving them warnings too of what could, where they're headed. Sure. Um, and I think it also is a warning for our church today. Wow. Be careful of letting different things come in to try sure. to please the world or mm -hmm. keeping up with the Joneses. <laughs> it can lead to similar problems. Exactly. There was quite a bit of history alluded to in this chapter. What are some of the, um, Brother Jerry, oh, please. Finish. No, go ahead. Okay, okay. I love hearing uh, these thoughts that God okay. lays on people's hearts. I'm heart. sticking with the same verse right now, though. Okay. Because something else is going on around in the world right now. Uh -huh. Is 16. <coughs> about Christians, how they treat other Christians. Uh -huh. And atheists are even getting in on this. It says, why would you want to be a, in a Christian religion when you can't deal with other Christians 
or you believe in abortion, which is killing infants mm. as the states. Mm. And that's real big on the internet right now. They're trying to wrap something, but they don't really know what mm. around that thought because it makes no sense to them. Mm. Good point. Can, can you hear God's heartbreak as he pulls the veil back of the things that will happen? Um, I, I, I w am contrasting a uh, camping trip that uh, I had the privilege of going uh, to when I was a teenager. And they had a guest speaker who wanted to impress on the young people the revolting grossness of sin. And he compared them to the word boogers, snot. And that's exactly the, the reaction that you would expect to get. That's not something we discuss in polite company but shouldn't we feel even more strongly about sin? As we listen to chapter 13, are we hearing God pull the veil back on the tragedy and pain and heartache that anyone who clings to sin will experience? but that God wants to rescue them from, but they won't let him. They bring it on themselves. Hmm. I'll catch Brother Kenny and then bounce it up to Miss Holly. Oh, okay. We have such an unselfish bunch here. We appreciate... Uh, uh. Give it to Holly because I forgot already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I'll be brief, but there's two things. Whoops, I just flipped. Um, so it's like verse 6 or 7 where it talks about forgetting God. Um, what is it? Six. six, okay. So that takes me to Deuteronomy 6, and it's talking about you know remembering to serve God, teach your children, and verse 10 to 12. When you get there and God gave you all, all this stuff, houses and land and food, verse 12, beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So it says, oh, you had so much pasture and you were filled and you were blessed and you went on to forget God. And then right after that, the next couple of verses talks about the lion, the leopard, and the bear. That takes my mind to Daniel's prophecies because God allowed these kingdoms to discipline his people. And that's exactly where they're very soon headed. No, I don't, I don't remember what I was going to say before, but it's about the uh, now. It's, it, it's in my head about... Um, how God spoils his children and, and, and you know like grandparents do their, their grandchildren and, and, and he's so good to them mm. that it, it seems to be because of sin it becomes a natural response to become I hate the word complacent but I mean uh, uh, you become fat dumb and happy that's mm. the you know that's the United States you know and now we're, we're starting to realize wait a second uh, stuff's changing now it's getting more difficult, it's more expensive, it's more trouble, it's, it, everything's, mm -hmm. you know, so um, it seems to be the natural progression, and you see it in Israel the whole time, it's, it's like a yo-yo, you know, he, mm -hmm. he they, they repent and they come back, mm -hmm. and then they get fat, dumb, and happy, and then they fall back into the thing again, and back and forth, and mm -hmm. it does relate to our personal experience, my own personal experience, I'll testify that, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. how many times have we got to go around this mountain? You know, now we do, wow. do, do, do. We learned this lesson bef before. Why are we? How do we forget it? How do we get <laughs> back over here again? Wow. Like the grazing sheep that gets lost. You know, he's not really looking. He's not paying attention what what he's mm -hmm. doing. He's just doing his little thing, and he mm -hmm. looks up and it's like, wait a second, we're we're a little off track over here. So then you got to pull yourself back into line, mm. and uh, we're constantly policing ourselves. Wow. So 
yeah, we, we, we get it. We see it. We don't want to, we don't want to get it that bad. We've already, we've been there. We've done that. So wow. do we want to do it again? Let's hope not. <laughs> Amen. I gave thee, thank you, I gave thee a king in mine anger and took him away in my wrath. How many times, and it goes with what Kenny was saying, how many times do we probably secretly uh, pray or wish for something that we know is truly against God's will? Mm -hmm. And God will grant it, but he will also take it quickly away. He will snatch it away just as, you know, he... he yeah, there you go. There, take that. Take the pleasure out of that pleasure that we sought. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Amen. Amen. These are some amazing comments. Thank you. Somebody else. Earlier today, I had the privilege of being assigned. Uh, one of the first readers um, because our delegation was at a time when I couldn't be there for most of it so they had me go go fairly early and the segment we were reading was the book of Ruth and it was fascinating to sit in a comfortable lawn chair outside just rapid fire reading all four chapters and experiencing the suspense and the, the storyline unfold of a story that we know exactly how it is. How many of us have read or heard the story of Ruth countless times? And yet it was uh, it was fun uh, when we hit a chapter break and I look around at everyone. They're like, "Don't stop! We're on the edge of our seat." This. Uh, but when you think about the contrast between Orpha and Ruth. They both married Israelite young men. They both suffered immense tragedy in their family, losing their spouse, not having kids. And, in, and they both started out with Naomi to return to Bethlehem. But when she said, really, seriously, why are you doing this? I don't have any more husbands to give you, and even if I started now, why are you going to wait? Orpha goes home. Ruth stays faithful. And fast forward through the story, God adopts her into the family line of Jesus. What would Orpha's story have been if she had stayed faithful? It, it certainly would be different from what it is. And how would Ruth's story have been vastly different if she had clung to her idols and her way of life? We'll never know, thankfully. But do we hear that playing out in Hosea 13? Because God had sought to do everything to get them to follow him. But they kept saying, no, no. Where are we at? God's chosen people bluntly reminded in Revelation of the Laodicean church and Jesus saying, whether you recognize it or not, that be you, that be me. What should we be hearing? Uh, Miss, Miss Tammy um, stepped on my toes nicely. 
that's okay. Because <laughs> it had already started earlier. But uh, you took us to Jeremiah 23, 1, which, well, we should. And, before, and, and the anchor verse, as I understand it, is Hosea 13, 9. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. Um, Jeremiah points out how it's, to a large extent, unfaithful pastors that play a big role. That's why I said you stepped on my toes, and rightly so. There's one more verse, though, I want to add to it because uh, it, it raises a conversation that we need to have briefly this evening, and that is Matthew 15, 6. Matthew 15, 6. And uh, this three-pack, Jeremiah 23, 1, Hosea 13, 9, uh, actually, it's a four-pack. I missed uh, uh, Hosea 8.1. We've read that on a previous evening. But uh, Matthew 15.6. We have not heard from the tech booth. Would one of them like to read uh, Matthew 15.6? Or is it my turn to jump in and read a verse? Matthew 15.6. Jesus is speaking. Matthew 15, 6. Here it comes. And honor not his father or his and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. I see several hands uh, itching to comment, so thank you for reading that, Brother Skip. Let's catch up on some of these comments, and then we'll revisit. Where are we going with this? Uh, my okay. people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ah. But it went back into the thing I forgot, where um, discipleship is really, like, lacking. And if you become what you behold... And you don't have anything to look at that's that's really something to strive for as far as the Christian ideal. Mm -hmm. And then they had these kings who are evil. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Their leadership. Mm -hmm. So they're they only they, you can only uh, a group of people can only rise to what their leadership is. Oh. Their example is. Sure. They sure. will never exceed that. Mm -hmm. So then that's why God didn't want them to have these sinful people in their leadership that they were supposed to look mm -hmm. directed at him to his example ah. and so this uh this lack of knowledge um destroyed for lack of knowledge it, it it's not like we don't know we know what sin is i mean everybody you know you have a conscience but at the same time there's there's something in the societal construct that when we uh, cooperate towards that goal mm -hmm. it works and now we've seen what's happened <laughs> especially lately as we slope. as we keep yeah. loosening the, the bands and then the uh, loosening the the ideals I guess you might say mm -hmm. that they're what are you striving for mm -hmm. is it just is it accept everybody for for whatever and whoever and however and that's and everything's gonna be okay that's what they're teaching that's what they're teach that's what their leaders are teaching Ouch. And so there's no there's no accountability there's no they make there's no there's God's there's law yeah it's and there's mm -hmm. I just don't know how you <laughs> it, it starts with each one of us trying mm. to to attain that example and then society will attack you because who do you think mm -hmm. you are you think you're Jesus Christ you know you you've heard it all before if you've mm. tried any of it mm. and uh, it's just it's a very difficult thing it really is our only safety is the second part of verse 9. My, your help is in me. Let me catch Brother Skip and then bounce up to uh, Ms. Holly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll figure out how to run these one of these days. <laughs> we appreciate y'all doing it. Thank you. Uh, uh, if we look at the historical uh, story of 
the Israelites and we can look at the fact that may, they maybe aren't saying no to God like we mentioned a while ago so much as the fact that they have a history of thinking they're worshiping God and Baal all at the same time. They had the the idols in the sanctuary and and they did the festivals together like a church we know of nowadays. <clears throat> so um, I just, I wonder if they didn't think they were doing okay and they were so, you know, we're told they're so uh, rich and in need of nothing mm. that they were just self-satisfied with what was going on and, and didn't look to um, worship God with the fervor that they mm -hmm. should. Wow. Wow. Amen. Amen. Circling back, Ms. Holly. I agree. It seems like every chapter in Hosea points us back to Egypt, coming out of Egypt. <laughs> so uh, a little bit more from verses 4 and 5. And uh, the end of the verse or it says, I am the, yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me. That's almost a direct quote from the beginning of Exodus 20. So Ooh. that's the introduction of the Ten Commandments. I think we also had that in something <laughs> last week. Mm. So he's taking him right back and saying, you know, syncretism and, and Baal and all that, you, you can't mix it. Mm -mm. It's an either-or kind of thing. Mm. And there's no other savior. And then it's touching. He said, you're not supposed to know any other God. And he said, I did know thee in the wilderness. We did have mm. that bond mm -hmm. at one point. But because you have something else added in, you broke the bond. There is no multi, you know, whatever relationship. So it's really sad. Mm-hmm. Um, in the land of drought, he's basically saying, I was your food, I was your water, mm -hmm. and then when I provided it, then you went off as if somebody mm -hmm. else provided it. Mm. Fasten your seatbelts. This is a, uh, uh, the, the ancient, antique uh, Oklahoma study Bible that I have uh, had no notes, only C note on Jeremiah 23 1. <laughs> so I ran over there and, uh, and, and listened to the note. It's powerful. There are professedly pious men who screen the sinner by their own transgression. They disregard the commandments of God, choosing the traditions of men. By the way, this is a letter dated 1900, and it's based on a four-pack of verses. Jeremiah 23, 1, Hosea 8, 1, uh, Hosea 13, 9, and what we just read in Matthew 15, 6. So that four-pack feeds into what is being said. They, they disregard the commandments of God, choosing the traditions of men, making a void the law of God, and promoting apostasy. The excuses they make are feeble and weak and will bring destruction to their own souls and the souls of others. Is that sobering? Uh, let me keep going, if you don't mind. Upon those who have taken upon them the work of shepherds of the flock will be visited the heaviest judgments because they have presented to the people fables instead of truth. Children will rise up and curse their parents. Church members who have seen the light and been convicted, but who have trusted the salvation of their souls to the minister, will learn in the day of God that no other soul can pay the ransom for their transgression. 
A terrible cry will be raised. I am lost, eternally lost. Men will feel as though they could rend in pieces the ministers who have preached falsehoods and condemned the truth. The pure truth for this time requires a reformation in the life. But they separate themselves from the love of the truth And of them it can be said, O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself. The Lord sends a message to the people, set a trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. Miss Lisa. I've heard uh, me say many, many a time, but boy, it so fits right here. Um, as, as Jeff and I have learned, I, I'll leave Jeff out of this, as I have learned the Bible and have um, become a Seventh-day Adventist, I have so come to see just what, and I have those same notes that you were reading from, <laughs> and funny, but I had highlights in mine also. Okay. Um, <laughs> upon those who have taken upon them the work of shepherds of the flock, they will be visited the heaviest judgments because they've presented to the people fables instead of truth. My gosh, all I heard before we came here were fables. Uh-huh. And as I think about that, I think, t- surely those ministers, their mm-hmm. ministers have to know the truth. Mm-hmm. They have to know the truth. Why aren't they presenting it? Mm. I'm just so taken aback. Mm-hmm. 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 It, it seems like God is calling the people in this chapter mm-hmm. to a higher standard. Mm. Amen. And so, again, we all have a choice yeah. to make. Um, I think the reason I personally trust you, well, I know the reason I personally trust you is because, I'm not putting that on you, that's, that's my responsibility, is because you don't hesitate to stand up there like Skip and Jerry and Pastor Dan and say, make sure I'm telling you the truth. Check it out. Check Call me it out. out, that's right. Absolutely. And um, so mm. that's why. Check it um, out. Mm-hmm. So we're watching you because you want us to, because also it's his salvation we're mm-hmm. talking about here. Let's not mm-hmm. let him fall down. And mm-hmm. that's why we need to pay for, pray for our pastor. Pray for them. And, and, and as Paul said, the only reason we can even safely look at a human being is if they are connected to Christ. The reality is our only safety is to look exclusively to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the only worthwhile pattern to follow. Yes. I'm going to go out here, something none of you know. Uh, About a year and a half ago, I just wanted to get deeper into Bible studies. And I used to be Baptist, so I thought, well, here's free online studies through the Baptist College. So I thought, well, I'll go through it, you know, and see. I got to lesson three, <laughs> and then I couldn't go any further. I, que- I put out questions to the teacher, and he said, this is what our tradition teaches us through time, and that is what we have to hang on to. Mm-hmm. Tradition. Teaching and that production. was on the second coming. The seventh week being pushed out, and the seven years of tribulation, all that. Wow. Wow. Ouch. We had um, probably a three-day converse <laughs> back and forth, and he mm. wasn't going to switch, and I wasn't going to switch. <laughs> so I couldn't, I couldn't finish the course. Sure, sure. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I'll, I'll race to Brother Kenny and then Miss Holly. and uh, Oh, okay, Miss Holly. <laughs> And I simply caution, we are going into overtime with a great discussion. So, go ahead. 
<laughs> mic on? There we go. Uh, Ephraim means fruitful. That's one of Joseph's two sons. And it keeps coming back over and over again. You're so fruitful, verse 15. You're supposed to be so fruitful, but I'm going to dry it all up. Mm. Your children are going to be born. They're going to die. And, mm. and it just reminds me, our church is growing by leaps and bounds, especially around the world. Mm -hmm. But we can't look at that as mm. a prideful thing because God says, you know, in many cases, it's going to be destroyed as soon as it's born. Mm. They'll be snatched right back to the devil mm. they're, if they're not born solidly and True. grounded in the faith it's mm. just a warning mm -hmm. it's you know never mind you 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 congratulate yourself or we do whatever no mm. jesus is our only safety and the authoritative word of god is what we must be anchored and grounded on yes somebody said not one in 20 on the church books mm. all right and i got a question for you mm -hmm. how often do you get challenged how many, how many times do you have somebody brave enough to, to actually challenge you as a leader? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a curiosity question. And then think say about fairly regularly. Are they member members or are they mm -hmm. they're actual members? They're mm -hmm. not outsiders. Both. All right. Both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fairly just, regularly. The, the demographics would be interesting to me to see, you know, attitudes and. I don't keep a running yeah. list, well, so I'm just saying not off, sure I could answer that. Not, not you know, mm -hmm. not personal, but just the, the mm -hmm. overall, yep. the scope of it. I mean, is it there a certain type of person that really does that? I mean, people that search, obviously, are going to ask questions. Mm -hmm. But to actually challenge you and say, mm -hmm. oh, I think you're wrong on that. Mm -hmm. And then you have to prove it to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it takes different forms, and uh, uh, it will come when you least expect it. But uh, so far, God has never uh, failed on His word to be the ultimate source of answers and convict. And sometimes the the most direct challenges are not because they're unconvinced of the truth. They're quite convinced. They just are tr looking for excuses uh, and out. Exactly. And, uh, and so all of the persuasive arguments in the world would never convince them. But it's amazing. Uh, some of those conversations that I knew would be uh, potentially very... Uh, it's been amazing with prayer how God had it all solved before we ever sat down to talk. <laughs> and it's exciting to, to watch him do work that I could never do. And uh, that is a, a lesson I am slow to learn and quick to forget. It is his work. It gets done a whole lot better if I stay out of his way and give him full control. Is that your desire tonight? To stay out of his way, but be available for him to work in and through to his glory. Let's pray. Father in heaven, such a powerful and rich chapter. But Lord, we hear the heartache in your voice. You have paid much too high a price for any of us to stubbornly cling to our selfishness and pride. Please forgive us. Please cleanse us. Please anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for this end time remnant movement of this prophetic movement that you are at the helm of. Keep us faithful to you and to your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So next week, we travel into chapter 14 and regions beyond. This evening, we transition quickly into a business.